we stop and think about it, we ask loads of questions every day, far more than we realise. Some of them will be verbalised, but a lot of them we probably ask, asking things in our heads and questioning things all the time without realising it. My husband Peter, who's here, is famous uh, amongst anyone who knows him for asking questions. But today it's my turn to ask him why. So Peter, what is it that propels you or inspires you to ask questions? I love asking questions. I think I've, over the years, come to discover they are a brilliant way of finding out who people really are and uh, bringing them to life and my understanding and my awareness. I owe a lot to my granny when I was young. I was desperately shy and uh, I didn't want to talk to people. But she said to me, just learn three questions, learn three questions to ask people and they will talk and talk and talk. They'll think you're really wise and you can relax. What she didn't tell me was actually I might rather enjoy discovering what I then discovered about people. So that was a real eye opener. And I think everybody is way more interesting than they might appear on the surface. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, our, our granddaughters and grandson, of course, love asking questions. It's everybody, everybody knows that, especially small children, are always asking why. It's one of the first, almost the first words that they get to uh, to to speak, isn't it? Uh, when they're little toddlers, can you tell everybody about um, well about one of um, our granddaughters' questions that was. Oh, they, they ask us some really basic questions, yeah. don't they, to negotiate, go to bed and stuff like that. But sometimes they come out with these really profound questions. And one day, uh, a granddaughter asked her mummy, is God real? And her mother thought wisely how to answer this. So she said, well, some people think he is and some people think he isn't. Or she. Or, or he, or she, or her. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then granddaughter turned around and said well, why is that and her mummy said well it's because you can't touch and bump into God the way you can a real person and that's why some people think he's not real so she, granddaughter turned around and she said well but my thoughts are real and you can't see those so she has sort of taken this whole idea of reality and what is it and she wanted the truth. I thought, that sounds extraordinary. Mm. I think she was only about four at the time. You think, mm. wow, the mouths of babes. Yeah, teachers. I mean, teachers love, I think, and motivated to carry on teaching, aren't they? Because of the kind of questions that come from the classroom as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you ask questions when you were young? I didn't know you then, obviously. <laughs> well, I think I was rather shy to ask mm. questions. But I think I... I think the biggest one I remember was my, I was 14 and my grandfather died and I was really profoundly shocked, I think. And then, you know, what was life, made me think, what is life about? Are we just born and live and die? Because we seem to be, it just seemed inadequate if that was all there was. But if even if that was true, I thought, I want to find out and try and understand what these different religions and things had to say about it. Mm. And I wasn't going to give up till I found out. I thought this is too important not to mm. seek the answer. Yeah. So I know it's been a big part of your working life. Can you say a bit about that? Oh, so yeah. my working life, I've uh, been very privileged to be involved in inventing and discovering things. But to be honest, most of the time it's just sort of looking and thinking, what has nobody looked at? What's the elephant in the room? Um, I know it won't work, but if it did work, how lovely would that be? And then thinking, are there ways we can make that happen? And somehow having that sort of childlike questioning and imagining and playing with ideas has been extremely fruitful in terms of generating some 
very interesting technologies for the world. So lots of questions at work then. <laughs> yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So in churches, you traditionally think of kind of like churches as, as people telling people what to think, you know, like sermons and reciting creeds and things like that. So um, don't you think it's a bit dangerous if, if we start asking too many questions about faith? Absolutely not. I think it's totally essential. And the Bible actually is full of people asking questions, desperate questions, not knowing if they're going to get answers. Uh, most of the Psalms, you'll find, you have a look at those, you'll find people in difficult situations, but they know something. They know that actually God loves them. He's still there. He's there. But actually, this bit I do not understand, I don't get but they have that honesty which they can afford to do like a child because they know that they're loved. Mm. And Jesus himself? Jesus was full of questions, yeah. both presenting people with parables, things for people to go away and try and work out the answer for themselves and ask why to. Mm -hmm. And even when he was dying, excruciating pain, saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. He's asking questions. Mm. It wasn't stiff up a lip. And... Mm. So I suppose the big question you'd like to ask everybody is... Why wouldn't you ask questions more than you've ever done before? Yeah. So what would you like to ask? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we'll need a bit of cutting. A bit of cutting.